Happy holidays, everybody! Whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, or you're just a big old Grinch who doesn't celebrate anything, we hope you're having a jolly season. For us, we're big Christmas guys. I mean, who doesn't love waking up Christmas morning and getting exactly what you wanted? Some V bucks for a Fortnite anime skin, or the ring light for some new TikTok makeup tutorials, or better yet, a Steam Deck so you can play Roblox at school. But if you didn't get what you wanted, that's okay. We managed to make a deal with the big man and got this co-op monthly for December out just a little earlier. That's right, our very own Christmas miracle. Don't mention it. So if you're looking for some games to play with your friends, you've come to the right place, where we talk all about the co-op games that came out last month, what co-op games are coming out in the next month, and any co-op news in between. This is the last co-op monthly of the year, and while the roundup and upcoming game sessions are a little slim, we definitely got lots of news to make this a proper send-off. So let's get started. Almost all the games we talked about releasing in December were just re-releases on the consoles from PC. Granted, there were some really cool ones, but nothing that felt like it was worth rehashing. That is, until Santa pulled one last surprise out of those big red sleeves and dropped River City Girls 2 for all of the gamers to enjoy. I'm happy to report it's got a strong 77 on Open Critic and looks like a solid follow-up in the much beloved series. Pro tip though, maybe avoid it on PC as users are reporting some performance issues on that front. This is a classic arcade looking beat em up with 4 player local co-op and 2 player online co-op where you take to the streets to serve out justice in the form of fisticuffs. There are a few cool RPG elements and even the ability to befriend some baddies and use them in the heat of battle. This goes pretty high on our 2022 co-op backlog so maybe expect some streams here or there and even a review coming next year. With Santa and all the game making elves going into their off season in January, there aren't too many games to shout out for next month. There's really only one, but it does look really cool. This is Superfuse, and it's launching onto early access on January 31st. It's an action RPG where you and three friends can party up and create your very own superhero in a world where superpowers are controlled by the wealthy elite. I've heard it described as Diablo meets the boys. And yeah, that sounds right on the money. It looks super fun and has already received some favorable previews, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is one that we hop into right away. Our main reasoning for dropping the monthly early was the Game Awards. It packed in a ton of awesome trailers and announcements, with a lot being co-op focused. So knowing there wasn't going to be anything too newsworthy or noteworthy in the next week, we hopped on early for you. We got our second look at Destiny's Lightfall expansion with the trailer you're currently watching. Not gonna lie, looking very cool and definitely tempting us back in for round three with Destiny. There's a new power for the Guardians to use, Strand, and yes, the rumors are true, it has a grappling hook. I think we can confidently say that this trailer has us hooked in. <laughs> Expect new weapons, strikes, raids, and locations come Lightfall's release February 28th of next year. Another highly anticipated 2023 game that we got a new look on was Nightingale, a co-op survival game releasing into early access hopefully sooner rather than later. This trailer had it all with brief glimpses at combat, exploration, story, base building, and of course fishing. Why do they always have to have fishing? The coolest feature was the umbrella, which was basically your Breath of the Wild glider. Again, we are really hyped to try this. It almost seems a little bit too good to be true. Our final new look from the Game Awards was for THE Lords of the Fallen. It's a reboot of, from what I can remember, the first ever Souls-like. This does look significantly more interesting than its predecessor, there's no doubt about that. The tone is overall significantly darker, grittier, and the developers claim it's about five times the game as well. Size isn't everything, but hey, we're at least considering this one as a game for the channel. That is much more than I can say for the first round. This will be a next-gen release with no current date attached. Speaking of release dates, we got a few of them for some co-op titles that are easily up there for most anticipated in 2023. Like literally, this is basically our top 3 most anticipated co-op games of 2023. Starting with Suicide Squad, where we got confirmation of Batman, but more importantly, confirmation he'll be voiced by the late Kevin Conroy. That's really, really cool for all of us Batman fans, and gave Suicide Squad a nice boost in hype. The release date, May 26, 2023, expect the boys to cover it. Diablo 4 didn't just give us a release date, they also brought out uh, Halsey, who was all like, you know, get hype for Diablo 4, nerds, and that was pretty cool. Oh, and of course they also gave us the release date for June 6, 2023. 
Now we are properly hyped for this. I say properly because we're aware of potential misgivings over monetization and reports of issues internally from developers. Match that with really positive previews. And again, the co-op bros find themselves properly hyped. Now throw properly out the window when it comes to this one. Our third and final big release date was Baldur's Gate 3, a game that has us fully hyped. Right now we got a release month for August of 2023, marking almost three years in early access. If you don't have it ready by then, I don't know guys. For the uninitiated, this is the next game from Larian Studios, who five years ago gave us the co-op masterpiece Divinity Original Sin 2. Arguably the best co-op game we ever reviewed for the channel, so yeah, expect us to cover Baldur's Gate 3 next year. Now everything I've already mentioned would have been a great showing for co-op, but we are just now getting to the brand new announcements from the Game Awards. That's right, we're really only halfway there. I'd wager that this was a really, really great Game Awards show. Let's start out with Wayfinder, a new action RPG led by the creative director of Darksiders, a series that we really unfortunately kind of missed out on. In an interview with The Sun, game director Ryan Stefanali emphasized that this is a character-based, free-to-play online action game with MMO-like aspirations. If you know us, we're not really MMO guys, and that will be a theme later on in this episode. Either way, I thought the first look was really solid, it seemed very cooperative, and I'm interested to see more of it in the coming year. Probably the biggest surprise to me, and the most hype of all of the co-op game announcements, was Remnant 2. Remnant from the Ashes is like a co-op bros cult classic, I did not see a follow up coming, and I am totally ready for it. We only got a little bit of gameplay, nothing too crazy, and of course the promise of a 2023 release. We're cautious on that release date by the way, everyone is after the past couple of years we've had, but we're not cautious in our excitement. If this releases, put it up there in the top 3 for most anticipated co-op games of 2023. Anybody else feel like this trailer did not advertise the fact that it was a Transformer game like at all? I mean, it was just a cinematic trailer, but still. It's a 4 player online action game made by Splash Damage, who typically create online modes for popular games like Gears 5 and Arkham Origins. It'll enter beta tests sometime in 2023 and that's pretty much all I can say about it for now. Again, why wouldn't they show like a single Transformer in the trailer? It's almost like this is a Transformers trailer in disguise. Wait a second. Keeping the Game Awards train going was this trailer for a new Dune game that had me super excited until I saw this bit at the end. It's an open world survival MMO. So while this isn't a traditional co-op game, it is a game you can play with your friends and we thought that we should mention it here. Now the idea of an open world survival MMO does sound really cool, especially set in the Arrakis of Dune. I already played one really great Dune game in Dune Spice Wars. Sadly, I'm not a huge MMO fan, but I hope for all my fellow Dune stands that they get a great title with Awakening. We didn't get much details outside of this very cool cinematic trailer, so all of you MMO fans out there will have to wait just a bit longer to see what this is really all about. While last game had me a little bummed out, this game has me way more excited. This one's called Blue Protocol. It's got that cool anime look, you can roam around with your friends on mounts, and it's another MMO, isn't it? Okay then. Well, looks like all you MMO fans are gonna be pretty busy this coming year. This will be the third MMO that Amazon has developed after New World and Lost Ark. They've had more misses than hits with this whole gaming thing, but Lost Ark was pretty successful, so maybe Mr. Bezos can land another win here too. Here's one we weren't expecting, Crime Boss Roque City is a payday-like co-op game featuring Vanilla Ice and Chuck Norris? Yeah, that alone would be pretty wild, but the game features a star-studded cast with the likes of Danny Trejo and Michael Rooker attached to the project as well. Gotta be real, it was a bizarre reveal on stage, but when I took another look at this, I was actually kinda excited. With no news on Payday 3, I'd love to play a heist co-op game, so here's hoping Roque City delivers when it launches on March 28th, 2023. The real showstopper, of course, was this. I mean, you see this logo pop up and everyone is instantly sitting up on their chairs, come on. The reveal that took everyone by surprise was Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Yeah, there have been some rumors, but man, who would have thought that the legends at From Software would follow up Elden Ring by reviving their mech battle game series? 
Obviously, our minds instantly went to, will this have co-op? And sadly, the answer is no. Armored Core 6 will feature multiplayer like the past games, but it will be more competitive focus opposed to cooperative. Miyazaki did drop a hint towards some Elden Ring DLC, so at least we have that to look forward to. And that was all the co-op news coming out of the Game Awards. Some really great surprises overall, but we're not quite done yet. We've got three smaller non-Game Awards stories here, starting with the new free update for Aliens Fireteam Elite. The Ruptured Cisterns update adds a new map for the Horde mode that features three floors. You can also unlock some Christmas-themed goodies as part of the update from now on to January 17th. Look, it's not much, but it's a free update, so you can't complain too much on that front. Last month, I commented on the return of Broforce with Broforce Forever, and now we're getting another revival of a cult classic co-op game in Risk of Rain Returns. This is a remake of the original game that's been rebuilt from the ground up. It'll feature two new survivors, as well as a slew of improvements to the look of the game, balancing, and new music, you know, all that sort of remake stuff. We never got to play the original, but we're big fans of Risk of Rain 2, so I feel like we're the targeted audience for this, and I'm actually pretty excited to play this and see where it all began. No release window was given, but we know it'll come to Switch and PC sometime next year. Here comes our last new story for the year, and it's one that's really exciting for us. Guerrilla Games, the makers of the excellent Horizon games, have confirmed that they're working on an online co-op title set in the world of Horizon. Yeah, this is huge for us guys. Now, we do need to temper our expectations just a little bit since there's no telling exactly what kind of game this will be. There's even a rumor that it could be an MMO or an MMO Lite, so who knows how this will turn out. But Santa, if you're real, this is the Christmas miracle that we're after. Give us an amazing co-op Horizon game sometime in the future, preferably sooner rather than later. Thank you from the Co-op Bros. It's hard to believe it's been one whole year of the monthly series. When I first introduced the idea to Gabe, we were unsure of what it was going to end up looking like, but I can confidently say we're both really happy with the results. You guys seem to be too, as it's easily hitting top shelf numbers with every release. And that means a ton to us, to know we're adding some sort of value to your day. If that's the case, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, any of those things go a long way. We're hitting a break in our scheduled play sessions with the holidays, so don't expect a whole lot of streams, but we're not hitting a break in content. So follow us on socials to keep up with everything we're going to drop in the coming weeks. And shout out to our first merch line. Gabe designed each t-shirt himself and did an amazing job. Definitely check it out if any of these designs here pique your interest. And this is it. It's our last monthly of 2022. Thank you again, and as always, we'll catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Rose.